Uh, hello, everybody. Today, we are going to talk about Spark NLP for healthcare and the lessons that we learned in John Snow Labs to build real world healthcare AI systems. I'm Aisal Kujaman, a senior data scientist in, in John Snow Labs. Uh, we will spend uh, for the next 40 minutes together. So today we are going to start with introducing the Spark NLP, what's going on with Spark NLP library and what we introduced in the last few weeks. And uh, we will focus more on the problem areas in the healthcare analytics and how we solve healthcare related problems through NLP. And if we have some, still have some time, we will also cover some case studies. So Spark NLP is introduced uh, in open source community in October, 2017. We were planning to provide a single unified solution for all your NLP needs and sitting on the shoulders of Spark NLP, Spark itself actually. Uh, so we were trying to build a library that, have that has no other dependencies other than Spark itself. So we take advantage of the transfer learning and implementing the latest and uh, the greatest state of the art algorithms and papers uh, in NLP research, and then try to implement the same into our own library. So it's already been used uh, by several Fortune 500 companies, and we have an active development team, which we are releasing every two weeks. We have in Spark NLP, we have two main packages and Spark OCR. Right now, I'm just going to focus more on two packages. On the left hand side, you see our enterprise module, which is licensed. On the right hand side, you see our public models. We, at the moment, we support 22 languages and we have around more than 90 uh, pre trained models and more than 70 pre trained pipelines that you can just plug and play and use. The, the, uh, the main difference between the enterprise and public is the module that is dedicated in enterprise version, like the healthcare models that we train and uh, publish every week. So we take the public or handcrafted clinical data sets, we label them, we train in new models, and then we uh, put into our uh, enterprise uh, library in a licensed environment. In the enterprise version, like the healthcare version, we have clinical entity recognition models to extract the clinical entities. And we have some models to link the entities back to uh, normalized uh, codes like a SNOMED, RxNorm, UMLS. We also have assertion studies to detect the presence of the clinical entity, like if it's absent or related to someone else or present to, uh, at the moment. And we also have the identification model to um, to identify the sensitive uh, patient information while we, uh, while we share our clinical models with the other people. On the right hand side, you see the public version. On the public version, we also have the clinical, uh, we also have the NER models, but not the clinical, but the public version. And we also have several state of the art algorithms already implemented, like sentiment analyze, document classification, information extraction and especially spell checkers. So you will get to use all of them in the public version for free. Spark NLP is already being trusted by the following companies that you see on my slide. And these are the companies that we know and aware of that they are using Spark NLP for their workflows. So Spark NLP uh, has been supported in four different languages, which are the main languages in the last few years, actually, like Python, Java, Scala, and R. While we say state of the art, we really mean that because we implemented the latest state of the art papers in NLP research and write our code in Scala side, wrap our uh, um, uh, stuff uh, into Spark NLP and then uh, share with the uh, open source community. Right now, when you switch from one library to another, you need uh, zero code change. Actually, the, the syntax are very similar, as you can see on the right-hand side, like Java, uh, Scala, and Python scripts. They look like they uh, almost use the same syntax. Uh, and when you try to scale your pipeline, to thousands of clusters, you don't need to do any other code changes because the, the one that work on the local mode will also work on the cluster mode as well. 
and it's a, a natively distributed and native Spark library actually. According to the recent surveys, Spark NLP is still the most widely used NLP library in industry, especially in the healthcare industry. Uh, these are the results coming from the last two years surveys. In two years in a row, we were, uh, we were the most widely used NLP library in industry. And we cover nearly all of the NLP tests that the other public libraries cover. We also put on top of those libraries, we also cover some. Uh, spell checker or clinical uh, NER models that the other libraries do not cover at the moment. As I said before, we are sitting on the shoulders of Spark ML, which means that the models that we create in Spark NLP, the, the implement in Spark NLP, can be combined with Spark ML transformers or estimators in the same Spark pipeline. So anything that comes from Spark ML can be also used in Spark NLP, and anything developed on the Spark NLP side can be also used with Spark ML. So sometimes we do the text processing in Spark NLP, and then uh, use some other machine learning algorithms from Spark ML, or vice versa, do some text processing in Spark ML, and use some state-of-the-art NER models or classifier DL algorithms in Spark NLP. And then we put them all the annotators and the transforms and the estimators in the same pipeline and save and then reuse later on. So that's the beauty of uh, being very uh, related to like a Spark, uh, uh, living in the same environment that Spark creates. In Spark NLP, we have two types of embedding, clinical embeddings and the public embeddings. On the public embeddings, we already cover multiple versions of low embeddings. We, uh, ELMO, we have ELMO, two versions of ELMO embeddings and BERT embeddings, and we also have universal sentence encoders. For the BERT and ELMO, as you already know, those are the new kids in the town that are shaking NLP worlds for the last few years. Actually, just one year it happened uh, since the BERT is released. Uh, those are context aware. ELMO and BERT are context aware and word embeddings, so it will get different embeddings depending on the context that the word is being used. And uh, apart from Glow, Elmo, and Bird, we have universal sentence encoders, which are able to create sentence embeddings for entire sentence or document. Otherwise, we need to average word embeddings for the other embeddings. And, and in the clinical side, we have the following uh, word embeddings. Clinical Glow that we trained using PubMed and PMC database. And we, all, we have our own enriched clinical embeddings, which we call it ICDO GLOW. And we have two types of BERT, clinical and via BERT. Actually, we have six uh, variants of the clinical birds, clinical versus via BERT in Spark and at the moment. We just, starting last week, we just decided to move this bio and clinical BERT to a public version so that it's not licensed anymore, so anyone can use from open source. Uh, and you can train your NER model with BioBird or train your classifier using clinical bird. Uh, it's all up to you. It's all free right now. So uh, how do we build the pipelines with, uh, within the Spark NLP? So Spark NLP is like a building blocks. So whenever, whatever you need in terms of your uh, use case, you can just select any annotator from Spark NLP or Spark ML itself, and then put inside this pipeline and then it will be linked together by like the output of one annotator will be used as an input in, the, in another annotator. On the slide, you see that there's a data frame which has a column of text. So we use at first document assembler, which is the entry point for every Spark NLP pipeline. So we take a document, create a document column, and then we use sentence detector and it will create the sentences, put the sentences and then use tokenizer and go. So which means that at the end, we will have the different columns for each annotator that we use in the same pipeline. Then we fit and then transform as we do with Spark ML itself. So uh, this is how it works uh, in production, actually. You, on the slide, you see two different pre-trained pipelines. Pre-trained pipelines are the pipelines like the chain of modules that are already trained by ourselves. 
uh, and then load into S3 bucket so that you can just uh, download and use. So you, there are some aliases that you can find by checking our Spark NLP models GitHub page. Uh, for example, on the left-hand side, you just pull explain document DL pipeline, uh, which is the uh, which is sitting on uh, multiple uh, annotators in Spark NLP like stamp checkers, spell checkers, stammer, lemmatizer, NER. So instead of using them one by one, we have a train pipeline that you can just plug and play and, un and un annotate your text. Uh, these pre-trained pipelines are running in light pipeline concept in Spark ML, in Spark NLP. Uh, so it's much faster on single machine. On the right hand side, you see explain document, clinical document version. Uh, in that uh, version, we have clinical NERs and a clinical assertion model in the same pipeline. Uh, so you don't need to build a pipeline, but we have the pipeline for you. You will just load it and then feed into your clinical text. And then you will, at the end, you will get the uh, uh, three types of entities, problem, test, and treatments. And then uh, you will get assertion status for each, of, each one of them. Like if that clinical entity is already present, like contextually present in the sentence, or there's something like mentioning the absence of that entity so that we can filter out some clinical text instead of using lookup tables. So uh, as you already know, uh, Spark and LP is Spark itself uh, for big data. So it's like a locomotive actually. So when people sometimes complain about this, when they try to uh, implement uh, like process their text in Spark itself, they complain about like it's slow, but it's like a locomotive racing a bicycle. So the bike will win if the load is light, if it's quicker to accelerate and more agile, but with a heavy load, the locomotive might take a while to get up to the speed, but it's going to be faster at the, at the end. So for the faster inference in runtime, we also develop like pipeline concept so that you can just build your pipeline and feed into like pipeline, like after fitting, you get the pipeline model and then you put it into those spark and like light pipeline models and light pipeline models will be will be removing the overhead of the uh, spark itself and then will be much faster on a single machine. Spark NLP is developed by John Snow Labs. John Snow Labs is an award-winning healthcare analytics company and winning several uh, awards for the last few years and we are mainly focusing in the healthcare side but we are also developing our public uh, modules, which uh, our development teams are releasing every two weeks. Uh, and the data, the, 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 the nature of data in healthcare is a lot different than that we can experience in the other domains. So people usually deal with the clean and structured data, but in the real world, we usually deal with raw and unstructured data. On top of that, when we talk about the healthcare data, it's, it's way worse. So according to recent research, less than 50% of the structured data and less than 1% of the unstructured data are being leveraged for decision makers. So, and in healthcare, it's even worse. So, which means that we are not able to, you know, like the healthcare industry are, is not able to leverage the data that they are sitting on right now. And NLP is an ultra domain specific field. So, which means that every domain, every industry, if they want to get the most out of NLP, like the latest NLP research, they need to train their own model by using their own data. So in healthcare domain, the, the origination and the exchange of data is a lot complex than the uh, other, in, other industries because we have some data sources that are uh, sensitive and uh, hard to collect the information, hard to document. Uh, and the language itself is very uh, unique, actually. So it's hard to understand that language, uh, even uh, by the native English speakers, it's hard to understand. So, which means that the, the data being exchanged across multiple resources in a single uh, hospital, for example, assume that this is a hospital cycle, data generation cycle, uh, which means that the data are, is everywhere right now. So it's our job to uh, put them together and then uh, get uh, some insights out of that. So the language itself uh, is the language that has been used by 
some specially trained physicians and the nurses, uh, some healthcare providers. And in NLP, we try to extract some features from those clinical texts so that we can use these features to build something else, something bigger in a downstream test. Like uh, the, the conversation between patient and physician uh, would be nonsense at the first in, in, in terms of any public, any art, uh, public NLP models. But our job is to extract the relevant information from that text and then create the features and then using those features, building another model to help uh, decision makers. Uh, this is a one simple uh, text that you can see in any healthcare notes. This is the, a sample from Mimic3 dataset, which is maintained by MIT for the last few years. And when you apply some other uh, NLP sentence detector or tokenizer packages, uh, it, it would definitely fail because they are not trained on uh, healthcare data, and it's not they are not able to understand the differences in healthcare data, uh, healthcare notes, like healthcare related data. So that's our job to, that's our purpose to train those models and use insight, we use to process uh, medical data action. So uh, our, we have one single goal, extract as much valuable information as possible from any single text in clinical domain. It could be name identity recognition, it could be sentiment uh, score, it could be some normalized code like ICD-10 or Sinomet codes, it could be negation detection of a clinical entity or the name of the drug or the dosage of the drug. So our job is to be able to extract every bit of information hidden or covered in, in nasty clinical text. Right now we have four flagship in our Spark and LP healthcare models. Uh, the first one is NER, named anti recognition. We have around 20, more than 20 pre-trained clinical NER models that are trained using BioSTM CNN char architecture, which is a state of the art at the moment. Uh, we have word embeddings that is specifically trained on clinical data that is able to uh, extract the relationship between uh, the features uh, instead of using the public embeddings. We have assertion status. Uh, I just showed uh, left to find the negativity scope of a given entity to find if it's present or absent or related to some family member maybe. And the last one is entity resolution. Entity resolution is uh, normalizing your data to assign some synonyms in UMLS, in SNOMED, or in Iris norm code, or ICD-10 code, so that you can standardize or normalize your text, clinical text, or treatment procedures uh, for reporting purposes like insurance or some other purposes. So how does uh, name data recognition model works in Spark NLP? You are using uh, by LSTM CNN char architecture, and we can use any uh, word embeddings in the middle. For the public, you can use like Glow or Word. For the clinical, you can use clinical embeddings in the middle. And then we create uh, embedding switcher for each word and then train inside our NERDL model, which is also using char uh, and CNN approach inside. Right now, we are in top three, and in production, we are at the Top, by the way, in production ready library, we are doing production ready library that is providing this benchmarks. So this is the output of clinical and named entity recognition models. As I said, we have more than 20 different NER models. NER models, that is, you just plug and play. You don't need to train. These are already trained on Mimic data sets, PMC data sets, or PubMed articles. On the left-hand side, you see our first NER model, which is clinical NER. You can find the name, all of them, uh, in Spark NLP model GitHub page. Uh, in clinical NER, we have three entities, problem, treatment, and test. On the right-hand side, you see postology NER, which is responsible for extracting frequency, dosage, and duration of a, uh, of a medication-related uh, statements. And, uh, and the anatomy NER is able to extract some body parts or some metabolism-related entities from text. And we have PHI to extract some sensitive information or cover or obfuscate. You can just even, you, you can either mask those sensitive information after finding NER and then or obfuscate them by replacing fake entities. So NER is the 
lowest uh, understandable meaningful chunk that is built inside Spark NLP, which means that everything coming after NER is built upon NERs. So at first we run NERs and then extract entities and then we apply entity resolvers, uh, assertion detection models, and uh, vice versa. So when we compare ourselves with Amazon uh, AWS medical component, we are doing comparatively better actually. Uh, and we are able to like we randomly test some uh, comparison for the comparison and we see that we are able to extract more entities than uh, paid service medical component does. Clinical assertion model is responsible to detect the negativity scope of a given uh, entity. Uh, for example, in, in the first row, you see that there is a mention of influenza. And as a human, when I read that, it's present uh, condition and it says present. But if it says, if it links that, if it mentioned that entity conditional, like in on the second sentence, you see that a type called CP. Uh, per week with the rest and exertion, which means that it's conditional. It's not there, it just happens with rest and exertion. And, uh, and on the third row, you see that came back clean is a positive and uh, positive sentence, but it's absent when, it's, when you use it in a clinical uh, context, like it mentioned that the test is clean actually. So this is a, another deep learning model that we trained on clinical modes using a clinical NLP channel in this data sets. And uh, you see another representation of that clinical assertion model. At first, we extract the entities, and every entity will be assigned an assertion status label passing through assertion model. And at the end, we will get uh, we will get a label uh, for each entity. So, which means that you can use any NER before assertion model. So you can just use pathology NER or PHA NER or anatomy NER. Even you can use public NER. To, if you want to find negativity scope related to that entity, you can just chain uh, NER and assertion together, as long as they use the bot uh, embedding section. So this is a clinical identification model. Uh, our job is to be able to, like according to HIPAA rules, like a safe harbor approach to, we need to cover uh, hide some of the sensitive information from clinical text so that we can share with public or the hospitals can share with public or uh, with their stakeholders. Stakeholders, Our job is to be able to extract every bit of information and then hide or mask. Or uh, if you want to preserve the consistency of a clinical text, we can just obfuscate with random doctor names, random hospital names. We have an obfuscation model inside Spark NLP as well. And entity resolvers are able to, we have three different entity resolvers at the moment and different variants of them, like around 10, more than 10 maybe. ICD-10, uh, SNOMED, and uh, Arisno. So they are all able to ex uh, assign some uh, normalized code, like ICD code or Arisno code, to any clinical entity that is detected in the same pipeline. So that uh, you can uh, formalize your uh, clinical nodes, and then you can, you don't need to hire any medical coders to assign some ICD-10 codes uh, for your clinical nodes so that you can report with that ICD-10 codes for reimbursement purposes. And uh, it's similar how it works with assertion because it's the same pipeline. We just use NER. On top of NER, we add entity resolvers annotators and resolvers just take NERs from NER model, uh, take the entities and assign codes according to algorithm that implement in entity resolvers annotator. On the left-hand side, you see the ISNOM codes. On the right, you see ICD-10 codes for each problem. So if you say that I just wanna assign codes for problem entities, you can just define that one, or you can just say that I want to uh, ignore uh, the treatment entities. I just want to focus more on drug ones because Rx nodes are more related to drug entities. So you can just specify that as well. It's much, it's very flexible. Um,
So uh, we still have five minutes, so let's cover some case studies. Uh, we have four case studies, uh, but you will not have a time to cover all of them, but the slides will be there, so you can check. Uh, the first one is, is the first one is select data. Uh, our job in that this is a real project, by the way. All these projects are the real case studies that we implement for our customers. Select Data is a company that is responsible for converting these clinical notes that has been recorded during home health uh, providing. Uh, so the physicians go to the uh, patient's home and then provide some services, and then they some they take some notes and then report them for the insurance purposes. So our job is to be able to extract ICD-10 codes. Uh, out of those uh, texts. So there are some, already there are uh, so many problems in that domain, like less people, less qualified workers, and less money involved to hire medical coders. So we uh, try to uh, automate all this process through Spark NLP. So we at first get the PDFs and then convert it into readable format through Spark OCR that's specifically designed for um, medical uh, notes in image or PDF so that it can understand the typos and the structure of medical documents and convert into readable document format through, through Spark OCR. And, and then we put these processed uh, TXT files uh, coming out of OCR into uh, Spark NLP pipeline, like which is an entry point of document assembler. And then we start processing our text inside like tokenizer, spell checker, NER, like other associate status or entity resolvers model. So which means that everything starts with a PDF or image, and then we end up with useful entities that is already normalized. And as you see, there are some, at first we extract the tokens. There are some typos, as you can see, like commonary and alteri are typo, so they need to be fixed. We have a spell checker in the same pipeline. We apply spell checker. So it's already fixed according to the context. So we don't want to destroy the right, like the correct word itself. That's why using spell checker is very unique process in NLP. And context aware spell checking is our recent addition to Spark NLP that is solely public by a context spell checker, we call it. We have a blog post about that as well. Yeah, once we published. So we converted commonality to coronary, artery to artery, which are which, uh, which were the valid clinical words actually. And then we built the entities, like we detected the entities. Uh, since our uh, NER models is a char based as well, so if, even there's a typo, uh, our NER DL approach is able to detect that pattern and then able to assign uh, entity label. And uh, we just get the, like the coordination of each entity so that we can uh, use for the rest of the pipeline. And then we have the entities. We, we it's time to assign ICD-10 codes. We are using our entity resolver models, and it just takes the chunks from the NER, get the, use the chunk embeddings using the same clinical embeddings, and then run through our entity resolution algorithm to assign some ICD-10 codes. These are all happening inside Spark NLP without going out of anywhere. And, and the second case study is Roche. Roche, Roche company, as you already know, it's a big healthcare provider uh, and pharmaceutical company actually. So they have some reports, like hand, hand created reports that they need to automate. Our job was to be able to automate this hand uh, crafted, uh, like to replicate this handcraft features with named entity recognition using our NER algorithm. So we labeled their data, we hired some annotators in from medical domain, labeled them, uh, we defined the annotation guideline and then train an NER. After a few weeks, we would be able to get uh, some uh, decent results so that uh, like replicating the human, human thought process while they are uh, circling or labeling or highlighting those addresses. So that's what we do actually. Uh, so the goal was to be able to uh, speed up the review of pathology reports and then extract the automation, like extraction automation, and then uh, like maintaining this uh, pipeline over time. 
So we started with PDF as well. If there are already TXT, we just discard OCR step and then feed it into our pipeline and extract some NER and then apply some empty resolution or assertion. Uh, you can use these clinical models for any other purpose. If you want to build some clinical classifier to detect if a patient would develop some metastasis or the patient will develop some other uh, illnesses through, um, through time. So you can use all these features like extracted features through NER assertion and resolver, resolver like a uh, old fashioned feature engineering. You can extract all these features from your text and then use in your downstream task to build any other classifier. And at the end, we were able to uh, analyze domain specific PDFs by tuning our OCR models and then training a custom NER models for them and then able to replicate their process uh, inside Spark NLP. And the, the third one is Kaiser Permanente. Their goal was to able to improve the patient flow forecasting. Uh, it's a huge uh, company actually. So they have more than 40 hospitals around the world. So they, they, our job was to be able to extract some NLP features from uh, from this flow so that we can use these uh, features to build some patient flow forecasting model. And uh, what are the other uh, features that we need to deal with, like a nurse staffing levels, bad demand levels, patient flow, those are all the objectives that we need to focus uh, by extracting those features. And then because these, uh, this problem can be solved by any other second layer uh, model building. So we need some features. We all have many features coming from uh, records, but we don't have features coming from the NLP side. So our job was to be able to extract those features from the nodes, uh, as, as, as you can see on your screen. So there are some nodes that are already hidden uh, inside some garbage and it's already uh, like handwritten notes between patient and nurses. Uh, so these are the notes that are not able to leverage in the later steps of the model. So our job was to be able to extract those features. And the, and the fourth and the last one is the using NLP for clinical trials. In clinical trials, we try to shrink the rectangular area of that clinical trials so that we can reduce to, we can help the companies justify the time spent for that clinical trials because they have just a few years uh, to launch their product. So our job is to be able to speed up that clinical trials, which means that they need to find the right patient with the right uh, attributes like a sicknesses or diagnosis or some uh, specific conditions. Uh, so what we did is uh, instead of, uh, let's just skip this first, instead of trying to uh, use some lookup tables to find those patients because these patients show signs of cancer throughout the time. So they may develop different stages at different times. So the sicknesses were, might be gone when we call them and invite them for the clinical trials or would still be there. So, which means that we need to check entire documents across like multiple years and then try to find out that if that problem is still there or mentioning that specific patient so that we can find the right patient for the right treatment or right trials. And if they just use lookup tables to invite those patients by, the, by checking their records, they would invite all these patients with represented by dots on the slide. But uh, when you check uh, when you check their assertion steps, actually, you will see that some of the problems are absent. Some of the diagnoses are associated with someone else. Uh, so it it would be greatly wrong and time consuming to invite those patients if they are not related to our clinical trials. So we applied our assertion steps model, and we ended up with that central line affirmed uh, patients and drop the other patients, which would be a huge time uh, saving by like an, an a cost-effective solution for that company. 
So we are at the end of our presentation. There are uh, many resources that we would like to share with you. You can uh, check our Medium page, our Spark NLP workshop repo. Uh, we also started uh, certification trainings for uh, Spark NLP for data scientists and Spark NLP for healthcare data scientists. And we shared the note for free in the workshop repo. Uh, to be able to use the clinical versions, of course, uh, you will need license, but you can just review on the repo. It's free on the collab. You don't need to install anything. Everything is in collab. So you can just run over there. And we have some recent articles, blog posts, talking about how you can build a state-of-the-art text, text classification in Spark and be using Bird or Universal Sense Encoders, or how you can do the same for NER. So how you can label your data, how you can train your uh, own NER in Spark and LP and then deploy. We have uh, many resources that you can um, start uh, and play with it. And we have a Spark NLP Slack channel that is very active uh, and we reply every question over there. So it was my uh, honor to be with you right now. I, I hope that you like this uh, and hope to stay in touch. You can reach me. I'm open. I'm available on social media like LinkedIn, Twitter. So you can just reach me or reach Spark NLP or John Snow Labs anywhere you want. So I would be more than happy to help you. Have a nice day.